Hi everybody, <clears throat> welcome to this verbling class with me. My name's Amy, and today I'm going to be bringing back um, a class on part of a series called Best of British Culture, which I haven't done for a while. And I thought we might talk about the royal family today. Um, so not just about um, the royal family of the UK, although we will read a bit about it and learn a bit about it, because it does play quite a an important role in our culture, even though um, the royal family, well, you could argue that they don't have a lot to do with how things go on. I think they're still quite an important part of the UK culture. Um, we'll also discuss what you guys think about it. Is it a bit sort of uh, old-fashioned to still have a monarchy? And what do you think of royal families? Are they a waste of time and money? Um, also, do you have a royal family in your country? I know there are still some European nations and some other nations that have kings and queens and such. So come along in if you'd like to learn a bit about the British royal family, and um, talk about it, what we think about it, and then share um, your own opinions about your own country or other countries or whatever you like. So it'll be a speaking class today with a little bit of reading to get us going. Excuse me. Um, okay, so um, what I want to do first of all before we get started is actually just tell you about two pages that you can visit in some, in some spare time that you have. Um, the first of the two links there in the chat box is my Facebook page. Um, so do click on that, follow me if you'd like. Um, I just keep you up to date with what's going on, um, share things that I find during the week that are particularly interesting. Sometimes um, you can get in touch with me, you can write comments, leave messages, everything that you normally do on Facebook. Um, and if you are the type of person who's often on Facebook, it's a good idea to like some of the verbling teachers so that you can be reminded of your English learning as you waste time on Facebook during the week. Um, all right, the second link is my verbling teacher page, and that is where you will find all the information you need about a teacher. So um, both a bit about who they are, and their experience, um, what kind of teacher they are, etc. But also um, their upcoming classes and also um, private tutoring sessions. So you can see their calendar. If you're interested in private tutoring, you can book a session from there. Um, and you can get in touch with us with messages if you have any questions about anything. So let's see who we've got today. We're going to be discussing the British royal family. It's going to be a speaking <coughs> class with a little bit of reading. So I'm going to say hi to Ahmad. Hello, Ahmad. Hello, teacher. How are you? I good. Am Thank you. you. I'm very good. <laughs> you answered your own question, Ahmad. <laughs> how's yeah. how's um how's everything since yesterday? Have you had a good day? Yes, it's good day. Excellent. What have you done? Tell me one thing you did today. Today I'm work? studying. You studied all day? I studied, yes. Yeah. Um, English or something else? Yes, no, 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 English, English, all English. You're single focused. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's very good to hear, Ahmad. Has it been a successful day? Do you feel like you've accomplished something today? Yes. Okay, well that is great news. Welcome to the class. Um, I just wanted to ask you about your picture, Ahmed. Um, there's a cartoon, right, of a guy with like kind of orange yeah. hair. He doesn't look anything like you, does he? Is that what you look like in real life? Yeah, I like it. <laughs> All right, welcome same to the class. Piece. Yeah, you have you got the same hair as him? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. This is the cartoon version of you. Welcome to the class, Ahmed. Um, who came second? I think it was maybe Omar. Hello, Omar. Hello, teacher. You haven't got a picture, Omar. All I can see is a black square. <laughs> is it deep space? Yeah. <laughs> All right. How are you? How's everything going? I'm fine, thank you. Everything good. is good. How about you? I'm great, thank you very much. Um, have you been studying hard lately? Is your English studying going well? Excuse me? How is your English studying going? Mm, it's good. Yeah? Alright, that's yes. good to know. Um, well, welcome to the class, Omar. 
Thank you. Uh, Raphael, how are you doing today? Hi, Amy. I'm fine. Thank you. Thanks for asking. What about you? <laughs> Do you get bored of saying the same thing at the beginning of every class? <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. It's okay. I totally understand. It's just sort of like the niceties that you have to go through. Um, but it doesn't exactly stretch your English, does it? Let me ask you another question. Uh, what is the most important thing to have at a birthday party? Well, <laughs> I don't know, teacher. So many things. Uh, it depends. <laughs> Let me see. A birthday cake. Okay, or, uh, you agree with Edson. He said a cake in the chat box. Uh, a birthday. All right. It's important to have a birthday. Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What kind of cake do you like, Raphael? Chocolate? Banana? Chocolate, van vanilla, or carrot? I don't know. Carrot, yeah. I'm a big fan of carrot cake, actually. Do you have. Is cake popular in Brazil? Yes, it's popular. All right. Some, it seems. I don't know. I've always thought cake is kind of like a Western thing. Maybe that's because they don't really have cake in Asia, but they do have it in Brazil. You can find it easily. Lots of people eat it. Yes. All Everything right. is sugar we like. Yeah. <laughs> that's why we are. That's why we are fat and. <laughs> of and course. We are, we are not healthy. We love sugar and fat food. No, that's not the stereotype of Brazilians that Western people see, Raphael. We see kind of like slim girls in very, very skimpy bikinis and volleyball on the beach. That's, what, that's that. what you watch on TV, but uh, <laughs> if you come to Brazil, you'll see the truth, the awful truth. Oh, no, that's put me off. <laughs> All right, welcome to the class. Thanks. Um, Edson, hello. Hello, did you read I like me? your ideas. <laughs> Zamba. A little bit crazy. No, I think it looks like a good party. Yeah, with alcohol. <laughs> yeah, that but I, I don't think it's necessary, but it most, of par most of the parties have alcohol. That's true, yeah. Well, how are you, Edson? And you've got a picture of, um, what is his name? Stewie, I think, from Stewie. Family Guy. Yeah. You know, he freaks me out. He's Why? Weird. Because he has, like, an adult's voice, and he's, like, all evil. Yeah, but it's the smart. <laughs> it's, it's like yeah, okay. But he's, like, a baby. It's kind of weird. And anyway. I know. Do you know yeah. how they always... All of the evil characters in any movie you ever see is British. It's so unfair. <laughs> <laughs> but he's not just evil. He has a good heart sometimes, oh, and he's oh. so smart, and... Yeah, I like the way he is. <laughs> All right. And you've got him riding a tricycle, I believe. Yeah. Well, I just picked this picture on the internet. I thought that it's the most um, suitable for the occasion, I guess. <laughs> All right. Well, welcome to the class, Edson. Thank you. Um, Aldona, welcome back. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. And you? How are you, teacher? I'm very well, thank you. I really like the picture of your little dog. It's cute. <laughs> How's your studying going, Aldona? Well, it's sometimes regular. Sometimes it goes well. Has sometimes ups not. and downs. Yes, exactly. I think that's pretty good. Mm -hmm. All right, well, it's good to have you back. Um, Sorry, I could just hear a little bit of echo there. So please make sure you wear headphones, guys, if you can. It just makes it much easier for everybody to hear. What we're going to be doing is talking about the royal family today. So um, I just want to ask you, before we read anything, I'm sure that you guys um, know something about the British royal family. So just tell me, what is it? What stereotypes jump out at you? What facts do you know? What comes into your mind when I say the British royal family? Um, is it posh accents? Is it, I don't know, um, maybe um, Prince George, who was born not long ago, last year, actually, it was quite a while ago now. 
Um, just give me anything you like about what pops into your head when I say the British royal family. So, Omar, you first. Silence. Yeah, well, I hear when I uh, hear royal family, of course, I think in a Polish accent, and I also don't understand. Uh, well, actually, I don't know if people continue paying for this, like in taxes or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Um, Do you, you still know, pay for that? Yeah, we. Um, I believe, yes, I think so, but it's it's very regulated. So the royal family is not particularly free to do whatever they want, really. Um, in fact, they're sort of, they work really hard. Um, I don't know whether you know, but, our, but the Queen has an event nearly every single day of the year. So she's doing something, she's opening something or uh, being the ambassador of something every single day of the year. She rarely has a day off. I think she has Christmas off. Um, but she works extremely hard, so it's kind of funny because you don't think of a queen doing that. Well, I didn't. Well, I find that out. But thank you, Edson. Okay, what about Aldona? What do you think about the British royal family, apart from well, a posh accent? Very... Yes, I'm not very royal, <laughs> <laughs> but I like the Prince Diana. Okay, Princess Diana. Yes, and I think, um, well, in my country we don't have uh, king or queens, and I think I would be for uh, republic. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, good. It's just a little bit of brainstorm, guys. We're going to be uh, more in depth later. Um, so thank you, Aldona. Raphael, your turn. What about the loyal family? I think your dog wants to say something. Maybe. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Uh, well, it's very traditional. Uh, mm -hmm. Since the beginning of the UK, there, there is a royal family, and I think uh, and they are really respected throughout the world. They, due to the traditional, because uh, since I mentioned, Britain is a very traditional country, and uh, I think they are very respectful. Okay. All right, that's interesting. It's interesting to get the perspective from an outsider sort of point of view. Um, so I just want to um, encourage you guys to speak freely this lesson. I won't be offended if you think that the UK royal family is a total waste of time. Um, just I want you to practice your English and, and tell me what you think. So Omar, are you there still or have you gone? Yes, I'm here. Ah, excellent. Omar, what do you think of when I say British royal family? British. Can you speak up a bit, Omar? I can't hear you very well. I'm not speaking. My lip is speaking up. Hello? Hello, I can only just hear you. Can you come closer to your microphone, please? Okay. But I think uh, I say rich family. Uh, big hump. All right, rich family. I think that's true for sure. Anything Polish else? Accent. Polish accent. Uh, Elizabeth. Okay, great. So Omar, I'm still having a little bit of problems hearing you. It was fine at the beginning of the class. And uh, maybe you can just see if your settings are okay, because I can't hear you that well. Um, all right, guys, what we're going to do is we're going to read a little bit, just to give us a bit of background before we start talking about it. Um, this is quite a cool website, because it tells you all about lots of different stuff um, about the UK. If you're, if you're actually 
go to the UK at any point, it's quite a good website to note down because it has loads of really handy information about lots of stuff that could help you. Um, but quite apart from that, it has quite a good section on culture. So we're going to read about the British royal family um, and talk about it as we go. So use this, this reading practice just as a chance to really practice your pronunciation and reading fluently. Um, I'll get you to read in turn. So I'm going to get Aldona, if you could begin, please. Okay, uh, British institution, the British royal family. The British royal family disappeared. Has had a turbulent, sometimes bloody, but always fascinating history. The British Isles have been ruled nearly uninterruptedly by a monarch since Offa took the throne in 774 and called himself. Rex Anglorum. Continue? Yes, please. The United Kingdom of Great Britain, which is the UK as we know it, was formed in uh, 1707 and its first monarch was Queen Anne. One. Since then, there have been 12 rules of Great Britain and Ireland changed to Great Britain and Northern Ireland in 1927. The monarchs of England and Great Britain include a great cast of memorable and sometimes infamous characters. Thank you. All right, we'll pause for a moment, Aldona. Thanks for reading that. Um, just a note, because we're going to be talking about a lot of different kings and queens. Um, the way that we talk about it in English is we actually um, would read this Queen Anne the first. Okay, the number that comes after the name mm -hmm. is first, second, third, etc. So you have to be Queen good at Anne Roman first. numerals. Okay, it'll be you'll a test today. <laughs> if you don't get them right, don't worry. Mm -hmm. I'll just chuck you out of the class. No, I'm only kidding. Um, this one here, Aldona, is infamous. Can you see which one I'm highlighting? Infamous. Yeah, so not infamous, but infamous. Infamous. Yes. The emphasis is on the first syllable, so it doesn't actually infamous. sound... Infamous. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Infamous. Well done. Um, okay. So infamous means that somebody's famous in a bad way, right? They're not famous for <laughs> anything good. They're famous for something terrible, most likely. Um... Some facts. Since 774, we've had a royal family, which is quite a long time. Um, and it's true, absolutely true, that, that some of the, um, the characters, I like it the way it calls it characters, because when we're at school, we learn about all these different people, and it is kind of fascinating. Um, well, I'm sure that some of you guys know all about this, too. The first question I just want to ask you is, when you're at school and learning history of your country, when you were younger. Um, what sort of history did you learn? I just want to get a really vague idea of that. So Aldona, can you tell me first of all, in Poland, right? Are you there, Aldona? No? All right, I'm going to go to Edson. Edson, could you remind me where you're from, please? I'm from Mexico. All right, Mexico. When you were, did you grow up in Mexico? Yep. All right. What was history like when you learned about history at school? What did you learn? Besides really boring, I learned <laughs> they teach you that well, they focus on being patriotic. So they tell they tell you all these stories about how we fight against Spain and. Uh, mm -hmm how well Mexico did in wars against <laughs> France and the United States and yeah it's kind of stupid I guess. <laughs> but All right, it's so the, the, way. Yep. the aim is to sort of create patriotic citizens, is it? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> did you learn about history before independence? Before independence, yeah. Yeah, right. but it's 
Yeah, they teach you that, but they teach you that in early, when you're really young, about six, seven years, so almost everything is gone now. I don't remember, and then things I know, it's because I learn things by myself, not because they teach you <laughs> that kind of, uh, I mean, about the Aztec culture. Yeah. Yeah, they just teach you that, that for about maybe one or two years in primary school. All right, it's interesting to hear what you learn in history in other places, because there's so much history in the world, it's, it's sort of like, what does your government decide is good? So that's interesting about Mexico. Let's find out about Brazil. From Rafael. <laughs> Well, besides Brazilian history, you also study um, European history uh, since the beginning of civilizations, um, Middle Times, Middle Ages, like uh, history of Greece, Mesopotamia, and and also the beginning of Europe, uh, like like the foundation of German state and Italy uh, when it started uh, I think it became a country in the previous century, 19th century uh, how uh, the all happenings which, um, which uh, were predicted the World War One and World War Two the in in the industrial revolution in in England, in, I think it's seventeenth century. I, I think seventeen or eighteenth century, mm -hmm. and things like that. Um, mainly mainly in European history. Okay, so you focused a lot on Europe's history. What about this um, this ideal of trying to make this Brazilian citizens patriotic? Do you think Brazil tries to do that with history, like Mexico? I don't think so. I think in the past it was, when I was at school and when I was uh, in primary school, I think schools were more patriotic since, since, uh, than nowadays. Uh, I think they have changed a little bit the concept of patriotism mm -hmm. because I don't think Brazilians are well interested in patriotism be patriotic <laughs> uh, but yes I think it changed a lot in the last years okay I, yeah yeah, Didn't want to yeah, yeah. alright it's, it's kind of funny how different countries treat this differently because I'd have to say that in the UK we're really really unpatriotic I mean we People don't care really about <laughs> being part of the UK. We never sing the national anthem. Um, I don't know why it's that. I don't know why certain countries are more than others, but I'd have to say we're much more like Brazil than Mexico from my perspective. I don't know what it's like going to school there now, but when I was at school, for sure. Aldona, are you there yet? Are you able to join us still? No? She seems to have disappeared. How about you, Omar? Are you there, Omar? Yes. Ah, wonderful. Omar, t which country are you from? I'm from Saudi Arabia. Oh, that's right. I remember now. Um, so can you tell us about Saudi Arabia? When you were at school, what kind of thing did you learn in history? Mm, okay. We learned about Saudi Arabia, about uh, King Abdulaziz, when Saudi Arabia starts to, uh, I don't know. So did you learn... Um, uh, yeah? about Islam culture. All right, so the, so religion plays an important role in, in history, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, and what about um, other parts of the world? Is emphasis placed on Europe or the Americas, or is it mainly about sort of the Arab world that you learn? Are 
Are you still there, Roma? Oh, and he's gone. I think he's having problems. Sorry about that, guys. I'll just say hi to Carlos. Hi, teacher. Sorry, I'm late. Hi, guys. No problem. Welcome to the class, Carlos. We've just been reading, um, we just read the introduction of what you can see on the screen, and we've just been talking a little bit about history. Um, what kind of thing you learn in history at your school? Because in England and the rest of the UK, um, the focus is quite a lot on the kings and queens that ruled our country over the years, um, and it becomes very difficult to remember all the dates and stuff. And um, Edson was saying that in Mexico that there's a heavy emphasis on patriotism and how Mexico did well in all of its battles. Um, Brazil looks at a lot of different variety by the sounds of things all over the world. Carlos, I've forgotten which country you're from. I'm from Brazil too. All right, so do you agree with Rafael about the history? What do you remember learning at school in history? Regarding Brazil's Brazil's history? Yeah. Oh, you know, ours, the people who, who had discovered uh, the country, you know, yeah. the Portuguese and, mm -hmm. and so on, and uh, the process of the bringing the slaves from Africa, from Africa to here, yeah. and all the process of, you know, to politicians to get to to get the slave free in mm -hmm. 1822, and some day, some dates are uh, really alive in my memory. Yes. <laughs> don't worry about that, Carlos. Please don't ask me about dates either, because I am horrible at dates. Okay, I'm just going <laughs> to see if <laughs> if Aldona is back. Aldona, are you there? No. Oh, she's having problems because I can see two of her dogs now. She's cloned them during the last five minutes. Okay. What we're going to do is carry on reading about a few of the different kings and queens. So I'm going to get Edson. If you could carry on from Alfred the Great, please. I'm going to zoom in so that we can see it a bit better. There we go. Okay. Alfred the Great. 871 to 899, the first and only ruler to be given the moniker the Great. Alfred was a well-educated man who improved the country's legal and military system. He's known for his defense of southern England against the marauding kings. The next the one, too? Yes, the marauding vikings. Marauding vikings. Okay. <laughs> William the Conqueror, 1066 to 1087. Okay, hold on, Edson. Oh, ten, ten. The yeah, we... sorry, 1066. To yeah, 10, okay, 1066 is because there's a very important date, the one that all British people know. Okay, okay. Okay, William the Conqueror, 1066 to 1087. William I or William the Conqueror has, as he is popular, popularly know, known, was the first Norman king. He invaded England from Normandy in 1066 and was victorious over the English forces at the Battle of uh, Hastings in Hastings. Hastings in 1066. William created a feudal feudal state that brought the stability and love to England and a strong government that endured for many years. Thank you, Edson. Great reading. Um, <clears throat> this is Red William the First, okay? Wi Rather than William I. William, William the First. The first. Okay. Yeah. William the First. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no worries. Um, okay, so this guy is very famous. When you're at school, you learn about him. I think the main reason is because he was from France, and there's <laughs> um, a kind of age-old um, tension, shall we say, between France and England. We spent a lot of time in history invading each other, basically, and this guy um, was actually really great for the country. He, he did some good stuff, um, and he's very, very famous because he invaded successfully and, and ruled us for a little while. Have you guys ever heard of him, William the Conqueror? Never. No? All right, that doesn't surprise me. It's kind of old, 1066. Um, no. Ah, Aldona, you're back! 
<laughs> okay, she was back for a second. And now she's gone again. All right. Um, okay, what I want to ask you guys now is, who is the, is sort of like the first, maybe maybe the first most famous ruler of your country? The most famous one that you can remember? The first guy who, I don't know, brought your country together? The one you always celebrate? Or is there anybody like that in your country? So, Edson, do you remember from your history lessons anything about Mexico? Who's the first guy that you always, I'm guessing it's a guy, not a girl? Actually, there are lots because, yeah. as I was saying, in school they teach you a lot of stuff about each of them. So you remember one of them because he was so evil, and then you know about the other one because he changed law. Or yeah, well, I will talk about Benito Juarez, okay. who is I don't remember and uh, the period of uh, his period. But uh, he was the president that split the state from the church and made a lot of reforms. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, he's very well known here in Mexico. And is he celebrated as sort of a positive influence or a negative influence it's mostly? A po it's a positive influence because he was also really poor. So he, he came from the countryside. He was just... Uh, raising their animals, mm -hmm. uh, he had a farm, I guess, or something, and he ended being president of Mexico. So he ended up. He ended, ended up. up being, yeah, being president of Mexico. Yep. That's a cool story. Um, beautifully spoken, by the way, Edson. Great Thank piece you. of speaking you just did there. Okay, Carlos, tell us about Brazil, and we'll see whether Rafael agrees with you. Who is, is one of the most famous, first, important guys in your history, according to you? Pardon me, teacher? More important? Um, so, I, I was just talking about William the Conqueror. He's probably the first person in history that we learn about as being important, and he did some good stuff. Is there somebody in Brazil that you can think of, maybe a long time ago, um, a very important, memorable, famous figure? Oh, uh, no, Brenda was the Don Pedro the first. The, the history uh, claimed that, that uh, he and the independence of Brazil from Portugal. Okay, so he's he's a he's a name that every Brazilian maybe would know. Do you think? Oh, definitely. All right, At you least it's supposed to, to know. <laughs> <laughs> what about um, Raphael? Do you agree with that? Mm, not too much. I didn't like him because it was Portuguese, and, Portu and Portuguese just stole for our riches to send to Portugal. <laughs> uh, that's one of the reasons our our debt started to raise since the beginning, since this this emperors, I don't know why I say they start ruling, start their rule here when he was a colony. Yeah. And I don't know, I didn't like him. Uh, I didn't like Portuguese rulers. Mm -hmm. I think that's fair enough. I can totally understand why. Um, all right. Good. I, I like it how you disagree <laughs> with Carlos. Um, let's ask Aldona. Are you there, Aldona? No. Poor Aldona. I think she's trying so hard. I don't know why it's not working because she read so beautifully at the beginning of class. All right, Aldona, when you do finally manage to conquer the technological hitches, let me know. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to ask Carlos, if you could read, Carlos, please, from Edward II. Okay. Edward II, 13, 7 to 1327. Widely believed to be gay or bisexual, Edward II was 
allegedly murdered horribly in 1327. He was the first person to establish colleagues at Oxford in Cambridge, but is best remembered for his resounding defeat at the Battle of the Bannerbucker against the Scots, which were then freed from English rule. Thank you, Carlos. We'll pause there. Um, <clears throat> you had a difficult little time, didn't you? Allegedly murdered horribly. Alleg allegedly murdered horribly. Horribly. Well done. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> what does allegedly mean? Does anyone know? Allegedly. It's popularly known. Yep. Or maybe it's uh, like gossiping. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's maybe you could say supposedly. supposedly. People would people say that something. It's not proven. It's not proven. No, it's not proven. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's but, hypothesis. You know, yeah. Um, but he was quite cool because he established Oxford and Cambridge, and this was in thirteen one of these years, in the 1300s, and these guys are still very famous today and carry on being great places of learning. Um, but what I do want to talk about is um, um, the fact that, um, that basically um, he lost against the Scottish, who were freed from English rule. And this is a bit of a current event that's kind of going on in my country at the moment. Which you'll look at briefly. Um, does anyone know what's going on between Scotland and the rest of the UK at the moment? I think there is a referent. They is trying to to Join. To, la to leave the UK. Yep, there's going to be a referendum. Absolutely. Um, so this is is not something new. It's been going on pretty much throughout our history. Um, however, I think now that we're so united and we have been for a long time and we're so intertwined with the economy and everything, really, culture, money, um, it's going to be quite a shock if Scotland decides that they're going to leave the UK. Um, so let's talk about your countries. Um, is there a part of your country that wants to be independent from the rest of the country at all? Has there ever been? Have you ever had internal conflict? Do you know? So let's see what Edson has to say about Mexico. Yeah, currently there is a major issue here in Mexico. There are some crazy people from Michoacan that <laughs> one that wants to independent from the rest of the country just because they practice a different religion. It's basically ah. the same thing, but but they are so crazy, and I mean crazy because they burn schools and they do a lot of crazy stuff. Wow, that does sound crazy, Edson. Okay, and yeah. the point is that they, what religion do they um, subscribe to? Well, they are Catholics, but they are like really ra radical, radical. Okay. So yeah, but it's they are just crazy because there are a lot of politicians that ended up. Uh, no, so there's a lot of interest there. It's not just just religion and they're also love. I think the leaders are taking advantage of the, ignore, the ignorance of the people because mm -hmm. they are scared and uh, the leaders are always telling them that they're gonna die if they don't obey and things like that. You can check uh, on Vice. There's a really cool report about this issue. They are so crazy. They are so crazy. All right, so um, it's interesting. I never knew that, Edson, about Mexico. All right, let's see what Rafael has to say about Brazil. I know that some sovereign states, in which they are more, in which they are more uh, European descendants, uh, I think they they try at least once uh, emancipate from from the rest of Brazil. Um, because they start to sell, to settle their to impose their culture, their European culture there, and not only cultural but social economic. Mm -hmm. uh, 
I think they consider I think they consider themselves more more prepared to rule a country uh, without influence of other states. But the uh, I think they they could uh, proceed with their with their attempt of emancipating because there's a lot of pressure of other other states and in the end they couldn't do, they couldn't split the, the country. Mm -hmm. All right. Did you know about that, Carlos? Heard a meeting? Pardon? You heard it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you asking me? Sorry. Um, did you hear what Raphael just said? Oh no, sorry. Oh, he was talking about um, a certain area of the country which has more European descendants wanting to split off. Do you were you aware of that, or do you know of any other situations in which part of Brazil wanted to leave the rest of Brazil? Oh yeah, that that exactly what it, what it happens uh, in some regions of uh, Brazil, mainly in the south and in in São Paulo sometimes too. Um, but uh, they're not. Yeah. The pre it's a pretty common uh, discussion that uh, once in a while it it, it it how can I say sometimes it. It's back and forth at times, and you know, sometimes it disappears, and two years later, I had it come back again. So it's a reoccurring sort of issue, really. Okay, thank you, Carlos. Um, I'm just going to see if Aldona's there before we move on. I, yes, I'm here. Yay, Aldona, welcome back. <laughs> yes, I can. All right, so your um, question is, Aldona, are you aware of um, any sort of separatist movements in Poland whereby certain people or a part of the country wanted to split or anything like that? Um, my country, I think, has the worst uh, position in the world because we are between two big countries like Russia and Germany. Yep. Uh, these two countries always dreamed about uh, about eliminate my country and divide our land into between themselves. Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, there are people that would like to uh, return to Germany, and there are some that would like to uh, return to Russia. And what's your opinion, Aldona? I think it's a stupid idea. Uh, we should protect our identity and we should be as we are. All right. Yeah. Um, well, I think I personally, my opinion is is um, on Scotland is that I actually really like the fact that the UK is kind of a team. So I really hope that Scotland doesn't leave the UK. Um, I think a lot of countries have these issues going on, but my personal opinion is really that, um, you know, within a country there are a lot of different cultures and there are a lot of different identities. I don't think that that is necessarily a reason to split the country. I think that it's better in some senses to work as a team and try and, um, I suppose, because maybe because I'm English, this is my opinion, because the government's sort of based in my part of the country, but I really hope that Scotland stays with us. I prefer that idea. All right, let's continue reading. Raphael, your turn to read, please, from Richard III. Richard III, 1483 to 1485 infamous for supposedly killing his two nephews in order to take the throne in the 
princess in the tower mystery the last English king to die on the battlefield at the Battle of Bosworth Field in 1485. Good. Keep going. Henry the Sixth. Mm -hmm. Not the Sixth. Henry eight. the Sixth. Yes. Eight. Eight. 1509 to 1547. Perhaps one of the England's most famous rulers, Henry married six times. He had two of his wives and divorced another two. Oh man. He famously <laughs> broke with the Catholic Church and destroyed many of England's churches and monasteries in the English Reformation that made the country a, a Protestant nation under the Church of England. Thanks, Raphael. Um, we're going to stop, well, pause here because Henry VIII could possibly be the most famous king in our history. I'm sure that every child at primary school knows about him. Um, there's even a rhyme about his, his wives, if I can remember it. But yeah, he had six wives, killed two of them, divorced two, and he changed the whole country's religion because it didn't suit him. So he's pretty infamous from that respect. Um, so have you guys ever heard of Henry VIII? Yes, he was very, very fat. <laughs> yeah, that's true, Aldona. He's in a lot of portraits looking quite fat and ugly. That's true. <laughs> um, okay, so I want to ask you guys now, we've already talked about someone who's sort of important to your country, but who is the, probably the most infamous? So by infamous, I mean somebody who's famous but not particularly for a good thing, for something bad or something slightly controversial that they did. Do you have a very infamous ruler in your history? Um, Aldona, how about Poland? Uh, yes, we had uh, a king like this, but I, unfortunately I don't remember his name, but he accepted money from Swede Sweden, mm -hmm. Swedish. Sweden. To yep. Sweden, to occupy our land, to live here and to... To, to occupy it, yes. Okay, and how long were the Swedes in your country for? Do you know? Uh, some years. I don't I don't know exactly how many years it it was, but. I All right. So he was infamous for letting the Swedes come and live in Poland. <laughs> and who received the money? Him? Did he buy lots of castles? Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> he received money. Okay. Uh, Swedish occupied our country. They destroyed our culture, our our houses, our people. Oh no! This kind of occupation. It was. It yeah. wasn't just they. They came here to live, and and everything was okay. But they uh, they wanted our country to convert into a, a, other Sweden. Another Sweden. Sweden too. Yeah. Yes. Oh dear. Okay. Well, that's definitely an infamous ruler. Thanks, Aldona. Edson. Anybody in Mexico who's infamous? Yeah, I think he's Carlos Salinas de Gutierrez. Uh, he ruled Mexico from 1988, I guess, to yeah. 1994, and is and he is the most infamous Mexican ruler because he signed the TLC and the, the, um, I don't know how to say this so the thing that uh, that makes the United States able to trade with Mexico maybe a treaty we call it yeah. a treaty yeah I think so so yeah so he's really hated because of that and also because he pri he made private a lot of Mexican companies Mm -hmm. So everything went up prices, mm -hmm. and yeah. So the at the end of his time, uh, Mexico yep. was really poor, and all the people was really concerned about the future of everyone. So he's the most hated person. <laughs> yeah, he's still, oh, he's still alive, and people still hating him. <laughs> well, that's. Yeah, that's um, Henry VIII. Luckily, is not still alive, but um, very knowledgeable you are, Edson. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. All right, let's ask Carlos. Carlos, 
Who is the most infamous Brazilian leader or ruler? Carlos? No? He's, He's disappeared. All right, Raphael. Okay. Well, we have we had lots of infamous <laughs> Brazilian <laughs> leaders. Um, I think there is no news that Brazilian is a sea of corruption and and everything is knows about it. Uh, I think one of the most inf infamous rulers in recent years was a president called Fernando Collor. Uh, he ruled Brazil from 1990, from 1992, uh, when he suffered an impeachment. Mm -hmm. One of these, one of his first measures uh, while he's in his ruling is suspends all savings, uh, appropriate from all savings from people. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and everything everything uh, our inflection rates uh, soared up uh, during this mandatory and people weren't able to buy anything. Oh yeah. Uh, due to these measures, and and there is a lot of corruption during his mandatory, and everything hated, everything hated him since then. Okay, so he he um he, one of the main problems was the inflation rate. You say inflation, corruption, and and the savings, uh, he appropriated from the savings of people. People okay. were unable to withdraw his savings in the bank. Oh, yeah, that's bad. That, that was a very unpopular measure of his government. Okay, it's it's interesting. Um, I just want to. I'm just going to ask one more time if Carlos is there. Are you there, Carlos? No? Alright, what we will do is continue reading just a little bit more. We've got a few more minutes. Um, let's move on. So, we divide up the, the British, like, sort of history into phases, I guess you could say. Um, Henry VIII was a Tudor, and his sort of family were called the Tudors. His daughter, Elizabeth I, was also really famous. And you'll see probably portraits of her. She's got like a very white face. She used to put some kind of stuff on her face that actually I think was poisonous. Um, but in portraits, she always has a really, really white face um, because apparently, um, you know, if you had a tan, then it showed that you worked outside in the field. So the whiter you were, the higher born you were. Um, all right. I'll get Aldona. Are you still there? Could you read Elizabeth the first, please? Yes, Elizabeth the first, the first, uh, from fifteen fifty-eight to sixteen oh three. Daughter of Henry the eighth, Elizabeth was an astute ruler who led England to victory over the Spanish, the strongest rulers of the age. She never married and so she became the fifth and last Tudor monarch. Many people consider her to be one of England's greatest rulers. Thank you. Keep going, Charles the First. Can you keep reading, Aldona? Yes, okay. Oh, sorry. Uh, Charles the First, uh, 1625 to 1649. The last years of Charles' rule were marked by the English Civil War, in which he was defeated twice. He was eventually imprisoned and executed for high treason in 1649. The monarchy was abolished and England became known as the Commonwealth of England. The Commonwealth was ruled by Oliver Cromwell, who served as Lord Protector of England, 
Scotland and Ireland for the next 11 years until Charles II restored the monarchy in 1660. Thanks, Aldona. So um, Elizabeth I was, was considered a really great queen because she did a lot of good stuff. She beat the Spanish, which we're always happy about. Haha, <laughs> no. Mm -hmm. um, we, we have continual arguments with most of Europe, but it's a friendly argument. Um, and then we have the Charleses. So Charles I was hopeless. He ended up um, losing the whole monarchy and we became a commonwealth for a short time. And this guy called Oliver Cromwell, who was not a very nice guy, um, took over. And there was a really horrible civil war. And then Charles II managed to get it all back together. Um, and those two always portrayed it in portraits with like this big sort of long black curly hair. So it's kind of funny how... Um, the fashion and things change, but if you see a um, sort of really, really long, permed, almost curly black hair, that will be one of the Charleses. Um, all right, so Edson, you've asked me which of my of, of these monarchs I like best. I don't know. I think that's really impossible. Um, maybe Henry VIII, just because he was so infamous and kind of crazy, and he had six wives. And um, I just want to, just before we have to finish in a moment, guys, um, there are some really good, if you're interested in history and in the monarchy and that kind of thing, there are some really good documentaries or series about them. One of them is, the, is called The Tudors, and it's actually about Henry VIII. Um, it's like a drama, um, a TV series. It's definitely worth watching. It's pretty good. Um, it's a good way to practice your English and, and probably increase your vocabulary because they all speak very poshly. And um, yeah. <laughs> it's a, okay. keep your eye out for that one. Um do you guys have any questions about anything before we have to go? Are you from for a monarchy? Am I from a monarchy? Yeah, I'm from the UK, so technically, yes. <laughs> okay, interesting. Mm. Um, I actually quite, quite like having a royal family. Um, I think it's sort of one of those things that brings our country together a little bit. It's like, they, they maybe are a bit useless. Um, but in some ways, it's something that you can have in common with the rest of your country. I'm not sure if people feel the same way about a president or a prime minister because they change all the time and it's all about politics, whereas the royal family is sort of a bit more about the history, the tradition, maybe some of the better things about the UK. I'm not sure if you could say better. Um, but thanks, guys, for participating. It was really teacher, interesting talking to you. <laughs> teacher, I just want to know if it's, it, that it's um, a hot topic in the UK. A hot topic? Yeah. The royal family? It yeah. was. It was or recently. No? Because we had the Queen's Jubilee, where we celebrated, uh, I think it was like 60 years of her coronation. And, yeah, it was a hot topic. A lot of people were discussing whether we, it was, you know, we should get rid of them. Um, but we haven't, so <laughs> that's kind of good. <laughs> okay, and you support it, so it's good. <laughs> yeah, I kind of do support it, I think. I kind of like them. Okay. So, um, guys, take care. If you want to learn a bit more about grammar, we're going to be looking at prepositions in my next class. So do come on and join me if you would like to. Otherwise, have a great day or evening, and I hope to see you again soon. Thank right. you, teacher. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Ciao. Hi everybody, <clears throat> welcome to this verbling class with me. My name's Amy, and today I'm going to be bringing back um, a class on part of a series called Best of British Culture, which I haven't done for a while. And I thought we might talk about the royal family today. Um, so not just about um, the royal family of the UK, although we will read a bit about it and learn a bit about it, because it does play quite a an important role in our culture, even though um, the royal family, well, you could argue that they don't have a lot to do with how things go on. I think they're still quite an important part of the UK culture. Um, we'll also discuss what you guys think about it. Is it a bit sort of uh, old-fashioned to still have a monarchy? And what do you think of royal families? Are they a waste of time and money? Um, also, do you have a royal family in your country? I know there are still some European nations and some other nations that have kings and queens and such. So come along in if you'd like to learn a bit about the British royal family, um, talk about it, what we think about it, and then share um, your own opinions about your own country 
or other countries or whatever you like. So it'll be a speaking class today with a little bit of reading to get us going. Excuse me. Um, okay, so um, what I want to do first of all before we get started is actually just tell you about two pages that you can visit in some, in some spare time that you have. Um, the first of the two links there in the chat box is my Facebook page. Um, so do click on that. Follow me if you'd like. Um, I just keep you up to date with what's going on, um, share things that I find during the week that are particularly interesting. Sometimes um, you can get in touch with me, you can write comments, leave messages, everything that you normally do on Facebook. Um, and if you are the type of person who's often on Facebook, it's a good idea to like some of the verbling teachers so that you can be reminded of your English learning as you waste time on Facebook during the week. <laughs> All right, welcome Same to the class. Idea. Yeah, you have you got the same hair as him? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. This is the cartoon version of you. Welcome to the class, Ahmed. Um, who came second? I think it was maybe Omar. Hello, Omar. Hello, teacher. You haven't got a picture, Omar. All I can see is a black square. <laughs> is it deep space? Yeah. <laughs> all right. How are you? How's everything going? I'm fine, thank you. Everything good. is good. How about you? I'm great, thank you very much. Um, have you yeah. been studying hard lately? Is your English studying going well? Excuse me? How is your English studying going? Mm, it's good. Yeah? All right, that's yes. good to know. Um, well, welcome to the class, Omar. Thank you. Uh, Raphael, how are you doing today? Hi Amy, I'm fine, thank you. Thanks for asking. What about you? <laughs> Do you get bored of saying the same thing at the beginning of every class? <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. It's okay, I totally understand. It's just sort of like the niceties that you have to go through. Um, but it doesn't exactly stretch your English, does it? Let me ask you another question. Uh, what is the most important thing to have at a birthday party? Well, <laughs> I don't know, teacher. So many things. Uh, it depends. Let me see. A burger cake. Okay, or, uh, you agree with Edson. He said a cake in the chat box. No. Um. All right, the second link is my Verbling teacher page, and that is where you will find all the information you need about a teacher. So um, both a bit about who they are and their experience, um, what kind of teacher they are, etc. But also um, their upcoming classes and also um, private tutoring sessions. So you can see their calendar. If you're interested in private tutoring, you can book a session from there. Um, and you can get in touch with us with messages if you have any questions about anything. So, let's see who we've got today. We're going to be discussing the British Royal Family. It's going to be a speaking class with a little bit of reading. So I'm going to say hi to Ahmad. Hello, Ahmad. Hello, teacher. How are you? I good, am thank you. you. I'm very good. <laughs> you answered your own question, Ahmad. <laughs> How's how's um how's everything since yesterday? Have you had a good day? Yes, it's a good day. Excellent. What have you done? Tell me one thing you did today. Today did I'm work? studying. You studied all day? I studied, yes. Yeah. Um, English or something else? Yes, no 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 English, English. All English. You're single focused. Yes. <laughs> That's very good to hear, Ahmad. Has it been a successful day? Do you feel like you've accomplished something today? Yes. Okay. Well, that is great news. Welcome to the class. Um, I just wanted to ask you about your picture, Ahmad. Um, There's a cartoon, right, of a guy with, like, kind of orange yeah. hair. He doesn't look anything like you, does he? Is that what you look like in real life? Yeah, I like that. <laughs> a birthday. All right. It's important to have a birthday. Fair enough, yeah. <laughs> All 
Okay, what kind of cake do you like, Raphael? Chocolate? Banana? Chocolate, vanilla, or carrot? I don't know. Carrot, yeah. I'm a big fan of carrot cake, actually. Do you have... Is cake popular in Brazil? Yes, it's popular. All right. Some... It seems... I don't know. I've always thought cake is kind of like a Western thing. Maybe that's because... They don't really have cake in Asia, but they do have it in Brazil. You can find it easily. Lots of people eat it. Yes. All Everything right. is sugar with light. Yeah. <laughs> that's why we are that's why we are fat and <laughs> Of and course. We are, we are not healthy. We love sugar and <laughs> fat food. No, that is not the stereotype of Brazilians that Western people see, Raphael. We see kind of like slim girls in very, very skimpy bikinis and volleyball on the beach. Uh, that's, what, that. that's what you watch on TV, but uh, <laughs> if you come to Brazil, you will see the truth, the awful truth. Oh, no, that's put me off. <laughs> All right, welcome to the class. Thanks. Um, Edson, Hello. Hello, did you read I like me? your ideas. <laughs> Zamba. A little bit crazy. No, I think it looks like a good party. Yeah, with alcohol. <laughs> yeah, but I, I don't think it's necessary, but it must have part most of the parties have alcohol. That's true, yeah. Well, how are you, Edson? And you've got a picture of um what is his name? Stewie, I think, Stewie. from Family Guy. Yeah. You know, he freaks me out. Why? Because he has like an adult's voice and he's like all evil. Yeah, but it's too smart. It's, it's like yeah, okay. But he's like a baby. It's kind of weird. And anyway. I know. Do you know yeah. how they always, all of the evil characters in any movie you ever see is British. It's so unfair. <laughs> <laughs> but he's not just evil. He has a good heart sometimes. Oh, and he's oh. so smart and... Yeah, I like the way he is. <laughs> All right. And you've got him riding a tricycle, I believe. Yeah. Well, I just picked this picture on the internet. I thought that it's the most um, suitable for the occasion, I guess. <laughs> All right. Well, welcome to the class, Edson. Thank you. Um, Aldona, welcome back. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. And you? How are you, teacher? I'm very well, thank you. I really like the picture of your little dog. It's cute. <laughs> How's your studying going, Aldona? Well, it's sometimes regular. Sometimes it goes well. Has sometimes ups and not. downs. Yes, exactly. I think that's pretty <laughs> good. <laughs> All right, well, it's good to have you back. Um, Sorry, I could just hear a little bit of echo there. So please make sure you wear headphones, guys, if you can. It just makes it much easier for everybody to hear. What we're going to be doing is talking about the royal family today. So um, I just want to ask you, before we read anything, I'm sure that you guys um, know something about the British royal family. So just tell me, what is it? What stereotypes jump out at you? What facts do you know? What comes into your mind when I say the British royal family? Um, is it posh accents? Is it, I don't know, um, maybe um, Prince George who was born not long ago? Last